Our daughter Julia was 17 or 18 years old and my cousins were serving in Zimbabwe at a hospital just giving of their time in retirement. They'd been there for a year or two and they invited Julia to come with their daughter and family to, to visit for a summer. So it was expensive, but we paid Julia's way to go. And for those of you who've had an 18-year-old child, you know that one expense only turns into another expense only turns into another expense. And that's kind of the way that trip was with every single phone call home, with every single everything else, and every single other event that went on that summer. But Julia came home and she started telling us about the trip. We had never been to Africa at the time. I said, so what was it like in Zimbabwe? What's the hospital like where Jim and Joanne serve? She said, Dad, it was the most amazing thing. We flew for, you know, 25, 27 hours, however many hours it was. And then Uncle Jim picked us up at the airport. And we rode for another 10 or 12 hours out across the terrain of Zimbabwe in the back of a pickup truck with all of our stuff after we had already done all that ride in a jet and finally we came to this little village where the hospital was, where they served, where Kathy is her name, the missionary. I don't remember the name of the village right now. She said we finally sat down, we were all exhausted. Two days of travel, half it in the back of a pickup truck. And they called us into dinner as if any of us were hungry and just as we sat down to dinner, they called me and said, there's a baby being delivered. They grabbed me, Julia, come, didn't you want to be a doctor? And they asked me to go in. I said, Dad, they gave me the scalpel. And they asked if I wanted to make the incision and I made the first incision on that mother's stomach with the surgeon's hand guiding me. And just as I did, a little baby's hand stuck out and she said, I'll never forget it. It was 20 years ago. I pray that little baby's still alive. Being an adult now, Jim and Joanne, my cousins that she went to visit, they're gone home to heaven now. And Julia, she's an adult now and teaching children on a regular basis. But I thought about how that one little hand reaching out from the inside of a mother and grasping on to Julia's finger must have felt like the hand of God. Jesus said, whoever welcomes one of these little ones welcomes me. And then he said, whoever welcomes me, welcomes not only me, but welcomes the Father who sent me. People make it awful confusing to get to know God and to get to understand Jesus. Jesus didn't make it overly confusing. He said, open your arms to a child. And when you open your arms to a child, you're welcoming me. Open your eyes and arms to a child, and when you open your eyes and arms to a child, you're not just welcoming me, you're welcoming the great I am, the uncreated one. The one who made the entire universe so that each one of us can be out on those glorious mornings, watch a sunrise, and share in the celebration of every single day, and reach out our hands just as if we're reaching out from the womb and asking to be held again by the hand of God. What an incredible morning. We have the opportunity to reach out our hands again. We have the opportunity to not just touch the face of God, but to be embraced by God when we open our arms and our hands to little children, when we love them, when we welcome them, when we treat them the way they deserve to be treated, that's how you get to know Jesus. That's how you get to know God. Maybe it's something that you've been failing at lately. 
Maybe you've been missing something in your life. This morning at Central Community, we're sharing in communion. We're a small church, just a little fellowship. And yet in that little fellowship, we have the opportunity to celebrate and be together like children who somehow the temple has been pulled away, the curtain has been ripped open, and we get to push out our hands and feel the hand of God lift us out. I'm so thankful for each one of you this morning. It's beautiful. It's fall. It's glorious. I'm going to go finish my run. But first, I wanted to remind you that to be the miracle, we need to be willing sometimes to take a long trip. Julia took a long trip. We need to be willing to sometimes go through the rough road. She rode that rough road. And then when someone calls us away from that moment of rest, we need to be willing to get up from that moment of rest and go. And when someone places that frightening scalpel in our hand and says, don't worry, I'll hold your hand. If we're going to experience the miracle, we need to trust the hand that holds our hand so that that hand of that little child can reach out and touch us and we can be changed. That's how we become the miracle, is through that transformation. I'm praying for your transformation and for my transformation this morning. I'm praying that today we have the opportunity to know God and be the miracle. God bless you. Have an absolutely fantastic day in everything you say and do. And Julia, thanks for bringing that story home with you.